All right, so we are continuing into chapter three here. This is 3.2, true tables for negation, conjunction, and disjunction. All right, so the first true table we're going to look at here is for negation. So if P in case one is true and in case two is false, well, when we do the negation of P, which again, we can say this as not, not P, Okay, that's what this stands for, okay? It's just gonna be the opposite of what P is. So if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, then not P is true, okay? It's just the opposite. All right, let's get into our truth table for conjunction. Remember, conjunction, when we talked about it back in 3.1, conjunction is the word and, okay? And it's using this symbol Sort of looks like an A, but it's missing that little crossbar that makes it an A, okay? But that always stands for and. All right, so when we do conjunction and disjunction, we have to, we're comparing two statements here, okay? So statement P, statement Q, just like we did in 3.1. All right, so notice if P is true and Q is true, then P and Q is true. Now in case two, if P is true, Q is false, P and Q is false. Case three, P is false, Q is true, P and Q is false. And then notice if both are false, P and Q in case four, if P and Q are both false, then P and Q is false, okay? So the importance here, when it's, when it's conjunction, are P and Q, okay, when we combine the two statements, is only true when both P and Q are true. If there's any false statement in there, it makes the whole thing false, okay? That's conjunction. Next one is disjunction. Disjunction means or, okay? We also use that little, that little statement, that little symbol there, it looks like a V, okay? That stands for or, so that's P or Q. Now notice this one's a little bit different than my conjunction. In conjunction, it was only true when both are true. In disjunction, if one of my statements is true, then it's going to make my combined statements true. The only time it's false is when both are false. Okay, so you can see case one, case two, and case three, when we do P or Q, they are both true, true, and true. But here, okay, it's false, okay? Because false, false is going to give me false, okay? All right. Let's move down to our first example here. Construct a truth table for the given statement. So this is exactly what they look like in my lab, and you have to fill in the blanks here, okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to fill in by column, even though I know it's number one on top and three on the bottom, okay? But when we fill in these tables, we like to fill them in by column. So I don't necessarily agree with my lab where they number it one and then two on the right and then three and four, okay? I think it should be labeled by column but that's just my preference, okay? All right, so we are going to concentrate on this statement and go ahead and do one and three first, okay? So we are doing the opposite of Q here, all right? So if Q is true, number one will be false, okay? Uh, number three, if Q is false, then number three would be true, okay? Again, we're just gonna do the opposite, okay? Because that's not Q not Q. All right, now, let's look at two and four, okay? Let's look at this column right here. All right, so we're doing not Q and Q, okay? Now, the only time they are true when you see and, when you see and, both statements have to be true. Both statements have to be true, okay? So, uh, number two here, we have false and true. That's false. Number four, we have true and false. Well, that's false as well. Remember with an and statement, the only time they're true is when both statements are true. Okay. Again, please make sure you refer to the tables up at the top. In fact, I would write those down in your notes until you get comfortable with these. Once you get comfortable with them, then you, you no longer need to look at those. Uh, tables. But, however, have them handy just in case, just in case you ever need to refer back to them. All right, example number two. 
All right, use the table to the right to determine the truth table of each simple statement, then determine the value of the compound statement. Okay, so we see this table over here about countries. There's five different countries, and there's number of films, um, feature films that came from those countries. Okay, so our statement here is already a compound statement. Country E produced more feature films than country C, or country B produced more feature films than country A. Now, the first thing I want to point out before we even get to the questions is that word or right there, okay? The or makes it a compound statement, okay? The or makes it a compound statement, and we write that with that symbol V, all right? So we have two simple statements here, and I'll underline them in different colors. Our first simple statement is the one I'm underlining in blue, okay? That's my first simple statement. All right, my second, my second simple statement is after that word or, where it starts with country B, and I'm labeling that one in green. All right, so now let's get down here to our first simple statement. All right, we did that one in blue, okay? That's one we want to answer right here. What is the truth table of the first simple statement? Country E produced more feature films than country C. Okay, let's see. Country E produced more feature films than country C. Well, let's see. Country E produced 242. Country C produced 416. So is that a true statement? No, it's not. So that is false. That is definitely false. Okay. Second question. What is the truth value of the second simple statement? This one we did in green. So second sim simple statement. Country B. So country B produced more films than country A. Okay, well, Country B produced 516 movies, and Country A produced 1,310. Is that a true statement? No, it's not. That would be false. All right, so we have a false on the first statement. We have a false on the second statement. So what is the truth value of the compound statement? Well, let's see. We got a false or a false, okay? All right. Remember, we got false on the first statement, okay, and we also got a false on the second statement, okay, and we're using that symbol or, okay. Now, remember, or, you only have to have one that comes out true, okay, but if both come out false, then that means the answer is false, okay. If both of these are false, then it's always going to be false. Okay? If one happens to be true, then that makes the whole thing true. All right. Example number three. The tea is hot and the oranges, that sounds weird, and the oranges have been peeled. So statement P is the tea is hot and Q is the oranges have been peeled. Okay? I'm going to highlight that word and, okay, because we're tying the two statements, we're, st we're tying statement P and statement Q together with that word and, and we can't forget we're going to use that symbol just like that. Again, it looks like an upside down V, it sort of looks like an A without that little crossbar right there, okay? So determine the symbolic form of the compound statement and construct a two truth table, excuse me, and construct a truth table for the symbolic expression. All right, so... Number one here, we're writing the uh, compound statement here, okay? So we're doing P and Q, okay? The T is hot and the oranges have been peeled. All right, so we're using and. So number two, if P is true and Q is true, then P and Q is true. Number three, if P is true and Q is false, then number three, we have a false statement. Number four, if P is false and Q is true, then P and Q is false. And number five, if P is false and Q is false, then that means P and Q is false. Okay? All right, so again, keep in mind, 
when we use and, the only time it's true is when both P and Q are true. If there's ever a false or if they're both false, then it's always false. Always. All right, example number four. Now we start getting into uh, a more complicated statement here, okay? We have statements both P, Q, and R here, okay? All right, so, you know, they, they give this to you, and it's kind of nice if you have more information, okay? And what I mean by more information is um, in the truth table itself, I really need to know what not Q is. And then I also need to know what P and R are, what, what they are as well, okay? And then I can compare the two, okay? Because notice that we're using or and we're using and, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the table over here, okay? First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put, now let me make that a little bit larger. Okay, all right, I first want to go ahead and do not Q, okay? Not Q. Not Q is going to be the opposite of everything in Q. So I see, so I see right here. I'm going to highlight it all in green. Okay, talking about everything in Q here. I thought this would be easier to highlight, but it's a little bit harder. There we go. Okay, so everything in that Q column the opposite. Okay, all right. So false, false, true, true. False, false, true, true. All right, let me extend that line a little bit further down. There you go. So eight statements, again, opposite of what I see there in the column labeled Q. All right, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and also over here on the left do P and R. Okay, now those aren't the negation of P and R, okay? But Q is kind of taken out of the factor here, okay? It's kind of taken out of the equation here. I'm just comparing P with R. So if P is true and R is true, then P and R is true. Okay. Uh, next one down. If P is true and R is false, then P and R is false. If P is true, third one down, if P is true and R is true, then that makes P and R true. Fourth one down. If P is true and R is false, P and R is false. Uh, let's see, fifth one down. If P is false and R is true, that makes P and R false. Uh, sixth one down. If P is false and R is false, that makes P and R false. Uh, seventh one down. If P is false and R is true, that is false. And then the last one, the eighth one, if P is false and R is false, then that makes P and R false. All right, now, now we are ready to uh, complete our table within my lab, okay? So, again, you may have some side work you need to do to be able to compare these, okay? All right, because, they, again, they don't give you enough space. You're going to have to do it on a separate sheet of paper to find not Q, and then I would also find what's in the parentheses there, okay? And that's exactly what we did. Right here, we did uh, P and R. And that's what we did right there, okay? And then we also did, uh, let me highlight that in a different color, the not Q we did right there, okay? Now, that's very important because now I'm going to be comparing these two columns that I wrote over here on the left-hand side I'm going to compare these using the statement or. Okay? Now remember, or, only one of them has to be true for the whole thing to be true. Okay, so here we go. We have false or true. That would be a true. Okay? Again, remember we're comparing these with the statement or. Okay. Number two, false and false. Well, when they're both false, that means that the whole thing is false. Okay, so... draw some lines. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. Number three. This was one, two, three. Number three is true and true. True or true. That would be true. Number four. True or false. 
that would be true. Number five, let me draw some more lines. Number five, false or false. Number six, false or false. Okay. All right, two left. Seven and eight. Seven is true or false. That's true. And number eight is true or false. That is also true. Okay, so you notice that I had to do this extra work over there so I can compare the two, okay? So that way I could fill in the chart in my lab, okay? Extremely important. Again, what they show in parentheses there, that should be done first. Just like your order of operations, if you're working a typical problem and you see something in parentheses, the parentheses should be taken care of first, okay? So please make sure you take care of that. Now, I know I didn't take care of the parentheses first. I went ahead and took care of the not Q for first. But right as soon as I took care of the not Q, I went straight to the parentheses with P and R. And also, I wanted to keep them in the same order. Notice that not Q is on the left and P and R is on the right. All right, I think this is the easiest way to do it. Please build your tables. Watch yourself as you build these tables and make sure you refer to the tables that I have uh, in the PowerPoint on uh, OneNote. So please make sure you go back to those and copy down those tables because they will be lifesavers when you're going through this homework.